Greetings again and welcome to BCO Sundays at Three. This is the second of four Jonathan Pilevsky informances in our reconstructed Beethoven Symphony, featuring discussion of and a BCO performance of the second movement, the scene by the brook of Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony, Pastoral Symphony. This uh, symphony is a strange critter indeed, part pastoral in symphonic form and part symphony with the characteristics of a pastoral, a musical depiction of nature. Beethoven lived in Vienna, one of the cultural capitals of Europe, of course, a delightful city that gave us Viennese coffee and Vienna sausages and Wiener schnitzel and those great Viennese waltzes. Now, contrast that image with what Vienna must have been like in the summer, a hot, steamy, crowded, stinking cauldron of sweat, garbage, horse droppings, and human sewage. Ooh. Hence, <laughs> Beethoven's passion for escaping to the countryside, and hence this symphonic love note to it. Unlike a standard four movement symphony with a boisterous first movement, a slow second movement, a dance movement, and a rousing finale, the five movement pastoral symphony begins with a gentle first movement. And a flowing second movement, more on that later. And both these movements are scored for only strings, woodwinds, and French horns no martial trumpets or timpani. Trumpets do appear in the third movement, a joyful peasant dance. <laughs> timpani and trombones join the fray in the violent storm scene. closes not with a bang, but with a prayer. From the Baroque era, um, typically with an underlying triple meter and often in thirds, you may recognize uh, some pastorals, uh, including the Pifa from Handel's Messiah. Or the third movement of Vivaldi's Spring from the Four Seasons, which we heard in the first of our BCO Sundays at Three videos and performed by, of course, our own Audrey Wright. And so this second movement of the Pastoral Symphony, the scene by a brook, is in fact a true pastoral. Beethoven says it's more an expression of feeling than tone painting. In other words, nothing to see here. It's really just about the music, no specific depiction of anything extra musical. <laughs> Don't believe him. Especially because he specifies the trio of bird calls you'll hear twice at the end of the movement. The nightingale,
a quail and a cuckoo. And the trio sounds something like this. So now I leave you in the eminently capable hands of the knowledgeable, informative, and most entertaining Jonathan Pilevsky. Thank you so much, Mark, and for that lovely introduction. I have the pleasure of talking with you about Beethoven's Sixth Symphony, the Pastoral Symphony, a work from 1808. How much did Beethoven love nature? The answer, mes petits amis, a lot. When Napoleon occupied Vienna the second time in 1809, Beethoven wrote to his publisher, I still cannot enjoy life in the country because he couldn't leave the city, which was under occupation. He said, life in the country is so indispensable to me. A year later in 1810, he says, how delighted I will be to ramble for a while through the bushes, woods, under trees, through grass and around rocks. No one can love the country as much as I do, for surely woods, trees and rocks produce the echo that man desires to hear. The echo that man desires to hear. Beethoven loved walking in the country. Uh, he loved going for long, long walks and he would sing. And I would imagine he wasn't always in tune. He would sing loudly. And he also sketched. He took a pencil along. And we have a documented case of Beethoven arriving upon some peasants while he was walking and singing and scaring them quite a bit. I would imagine so. Yeah, long walks in the country, adoring nature. Lived in the city in Vienna from 1792 to his death in 1827. But went to parks whenever he could and spent as much time in the country, either right around Vienna or sometimes he spent time in Bohemia or spent time in Hungary at various patrons' estates. Yeah, nature, extremely important to this symphony and to Beethoven himself. The in inspiration for this started as early as 1802, six years before its premiere. That's a long time. And it was inspired by a work of Justin Heinrich Knecht, a composer who is completely forgotten about except with regard to Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony. In 1784, he wrote a piece entitled Portrait Musical de la Nature ou Grand Symphonie, a musical portrait of nature or a grand symphony. Now, did Beethoven know this music? Absolutely not. We're, we're quite sure he didn't see the score, but he saw an advertisement for it and he saw the titles and he loosely bases his titles on Knecht's. And his narrative for the symphony is the same as Knecht's. And what is the narrative? Movement one, pleasant feelings which awaken in men on arriving in the country, Beethoven's words. Second, Seen by the brook, that's the movement we will hear. Third, a merry gathering of country people, aka peasants. This is interrupted by the fourth piece, thunder and storm, into which breaks fifth piece, salutary feelings combined with thanks to the deity. So we arrive in the country, we spend some time by the brook, we meet some peasants, we, the, we hear a storm, we run for cover, and then those that survive the storm give thanks to the deity for their actual survival. Our second movement is written in 12-8, which is the rhythm of the Sicilian. And it is a very one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's beautiful compound time. Four groups of three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. The Sicilian was uh, an Italian shepherd's dance, very pastoral. And Beethoven is definitely mm, thinking back to the Baroque period a little bit in this choice, this beautiful Siciliano or Sicilian take your pick. And what are we describing? Well, if we're by the brook, it better be water, right? And the first thing we hear is this astonishing line. It, it's, a, it's a line that descends an octave. And it, why are we descending? Because water flows down, right? I mean, and this little idea will flow incessantly, get it? Flow incessantly through the movement. Above that, we have all kinds of birds and insects and, and sounds that we would hear on a sultry summer afternoon in the woods, which Beethoven is painting. Sir Donald Francis Tovey, a man who has never lost for words, had one word to describe this movement, and that was lazy. 
when has Beethoven's music ever been called lacy? Beethoven's music is energetic. Beethoven's music is revolutionary. Beethoven's music is intense. Lazy? Let's talk about the premiere of this, because this is one of the most fascinating evenings of Beethoven's life and in music history in general. I take you to December 22nd, 1808. It's winter. I take you to the Theater an der Wien. Beethoven has been given the theater for his own use for a concert or what they would call an academy. Now, the way you got the theater for your own use, and this could be a very potentially profitable night for you. If you had done enough charity work and you had done a lot of good things for the community, the community would give you an evening where you could program what you want in the theater and you would get the proceeds. As I mentioned at the beginning of this chat, Beethoven had been unbelievably prolific and Beethoven had composed so much that he decided tonight is my night to have the theater all to myself and I am gonna pack every single piece that I've written in the last while and some that I wrote a long time ago all into the monster concert that became Beethoven's grand evening of December 22nd, 1808. It began, mes petits amis, with the symphony number six, the pastoral symphony. So this was actually the first work that was heard on part one of this evening. Then we had an aria entitled A ah, Perfido for soprano and orchestra. Then Beethoven decided he would have the Gloria from his mass in C. And then the first half would culminate with the piano concerto number four. Now, being in radio, I know how long everything is, and I can tell you that that is well over an hour and close to two of music. In part two of our concert, after an intermission, symphony number five, the Sanctus from the Mass in C, Beethoven then would have improvised at the piano, and finally, because the evening wasn't long enough and needed a grand finale, Beethoven composed a piece specifically for that evening because he had uh, vocal soloists from the Mass, because he had a chorus, and because he played the piano very well, as good as anyone in Vienna, and because he had an orchestra, he wrote the choral fantasy for piano soloist, vocal soloists, chorus, and orchestra. A man named Reichardt, who is a friend of Prince Lobkowitz, who sat next to Prince Lobkowitz, who the symphony is uh, dedicated to, symphony number six dedicated to Count Razumovsky and Prince Lobkowitz, big patrons of Beethoven. Reichardt remembers, he says, there we sat in the most bitter cold from half past six until half past 10 and confirmed for ourselves the maxim that one may easily have too much of a good thing, still more of a powerful one. We don't know if Beethoven made any money, but we do know that it was an incredible evening that probably years later, anybody who was there probably remembered, and I would think probably remembered fondly despite the cold. Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony is a very special piece of music. It's very dear to my heart. It is Beethoven at his most calm, at his most serene, and, and, uh, serene, and at his most beautiful. And it is very much worth listening to. I invite you to enjoy a very fine performance of the second movement of Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony featuring Mark Ann Thacker and the most excellent Baltimore Chamber Orchestra as we take you to a scene by the brook.
I hope you enjoyed that. Join us in a couple of weeks when the next BCO Sundays at 3 video is another Jonathan Pilevsky informants when Jonathan and I bring you a discussion of and a BCO performance of the third movement, the scherzo-like third movement of Beethoven's Symphony Number no. 7.